In our first story, the Electoral Commission will later this morning move to senior high schools to register students who are eligible to vote as part of the ongoing voter registration exercise at an emergency inter-party advisory committee meeting on Thursday. The Electoral Commission briefed political parties about its decision to register students in schools that are not gazetted as registration centers. Latif Rudri's report that while the NDC disagreed with their decision, the MPP said they agreed with the Electoral Commission's outcome. The exercise aims to capture all eligible students into the register, but the EC faces a challenge as some designated centers are not captured in centers that have been gazetted. Also, there are fears that the exercise could compound the precarious situation COVID-19 had already created in some schools across the country. Kwesi Jonah of IDEX sat through the emergency meeting. The, it's, it's a very simple message. The final year students in SHS are on campus. The question is, because of the COVID-19, even parents are not allowed. How do you register them? So the UC has made a very special arrangement to go to those campuses that have no registration centers to register them. That, that's, the main, that's the main thing. And that has been agreed by all political parties? Apart from NDC, which raised certain problems. Deputy General Secretary of the Opposition, NDC, Peter Otokuno described the decision by the Electoral Commission as a breach of the law governing the ongoing registration exercise. Well, it, it, is, it is still a mystery what the EC wants to achieve uh, uh, in this country and what they want to achieve with this election. It is very bizarre. You have the case whereby you invite us to tell us that of all the gazetted registration centers where we will do, where we will do the registration, where the registration is underway, you are going to send the machines to every, every single secondary school so that you can register the students as well in the schools. Now, the law says that every station that you send a machine to register must be a gazetted registration, and it should be a pooling station. The law does not stop the Electoral Commission from creating additional centers, but you must follow the law and gazette those centers before you send a the machine there. They are telling us that from tomorrow, they are sending some of their machines to every secondary school to go and register them when they are not gazetted centers, when by law, they don't qualify to register anybody there. So by extension, what you are saying is that they can even move the machine to somebody's room in the night beyond the gazetted time that ends at 6 p.m. and register people. The governing MPP, however, agrees with the Electoral Commission. The general secretary of the party, John Buedu, says pushback from the NDC is understandable because the party knows it will not get the votes of the students who will be the first graduates of the administration's free senior high school policy. The whole thing is starting tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow next. So it wasn't conclusive. Are we coming back again? We discussed it. Okay. And in a meeting like that, you can have a position that is different from the position of others. I disagree the debate with the Electoral Commission. I disagree with the NDC as well. So what, what, what do you mean by it's not conclusive? We that, concluded. That's the sense I'm getting from your opponents. Which opponents? Uh, they, I know, mm. who obviously kick against students registering. Why, why do you say so? Why? Because... In this country, I used to be national youth organizer of the New Patriotic Party. In all campuses throughout the country, including whole Polytechnic, we won the elections there. So if you are having a situation that you want to register at secondary schools, where you not to even talk about beneficiaries of SHS. The, the, to, which, be, which, to be an adult graduate. You understand, which the NDC know that is their Waterloo. The exercise starts tomorrow, Friday, July 10, in senior high schools that are not designated as registration centers for the voters' ID. Now let's take you to the Ashanti region next. And the Ghana Health Service put out mass testing of students for COVID-19 despite confirmed cases in some schools. Ashanti Regional Health Director Dr. Yumano Tinkrang admits Mass testing is the best option, but insist it is too expensive for a developing country like Ghana. Ohim Interior has more. Second cycle schools reopened last month after a three-month break due to COVID-19. Six students, as well as a teacher and a spouse, have tested positive for COVID-19 at the Accra Girls Senior High School. In the Ashanti region, two schools, including Konongu Wesley High, 
have also recorded confirmed cases. Went on rampage on Tuesday during the death threat leak. Is abandoning the family to die for fear of Oh, I have to apologize for the distortion in the sound of that clip there. We'll try and rectify it and as much as possible. If time will permit, we'll bring that back to you. But still remaining in the region, Deputy Chief of Staff Francis Asenso Boache says this year's election will be reduced to the achievement of the first terms of President Okufuado and ex-president John Dramani Mahama in the last eight years. The Parliamentary Center for Bantama Constituency, the parliamentary candidate for the Bantama Constituency says President Ekufuado will emerge victorious as he has evolved policies that have impacted positively on the lives of the people. He is also confident the MPP will increase its political fortunes in the Ashanti region in the upcoming elections. Erastos Asaridonko has more. The Deputy Chief of Staff, who is also the NPP parliamentary candidate for Bantama, went through the registration process himself today. He also visited and distributed a number of face masks and sanitizers at selected registration centers within the Bantama constituency. At the House of Faith Center at Imrum, Francis Asenso Boache took time to address some students who had gathered to go through the registration process. And, 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 and I'm also going to be the MPP parliamentary candidate for the bank. I'm the one you are going to be voting for me. He told Love News this year's election will be decided on the achievements of President Akufuado and ex-President Mahama during their first terms in office. What will be the deciding factor for this whole general elections, especially in the Shanti region? It's about the achievement of the MPP and the NDC, especially when uh, the two leading candidates were the two le leading candidates in the last election. It's, it's basically going to be about the performance of our, our record in this administration and in the last administration. And as you know, any fair-minded person will know that the difference is clear. Uh, we have said time and again that President Mahama, as president, was not able to introduce any single policy that affected the lives of people. And when we came, President Enel Kufuado has introduced several policy programs that are affecting the daily lives of people. And I think that's what Ghanaians are going to use to cast their ballot come December 2020. He also expressed optimism that the Shanti region will increase the party's votes in this year's elections. We are very hopeful, given the uh, work we have done. We are very hopeful that we are going to do a lot better in the Shanti region than before. Any prediction you want to no put? No prediction yet, but I'm hopeful. that we are, we are now doing the registration. The campaign hasn't started. So it is not a time for prediction. We are still working. I believe that at the end of the day, when uh, we get close to the election, we, 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 we know where, where we are. And uh, we, we, can, we can, if there's any need for prediction, we will. But we are confident of victory come 2020. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaredonko, Kumasi. Away from issues of election, let's talk some business. Because the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communications has, in collaboration with the Director General of the Kofi Annan Center of Excellence, donated computers and accessories worth over 40,000 Ghana cities to the Jema St. Peter's Junior High School in the Kentampo South District of the Bono East region. The donation forms part of GIFEX aims to facilitate the teaching and learning of information and communications technology across all educational institutions, especially having a much more focus on rural schools. 
We'll bring you more in the following report by Anasa Beat. How information and communications technology continue to advance in Western and Asian countries. African countries, including Ghana, still experience a lag in its implementation, and this is because access to ICT facilities continue to remain a major challenge. And even though basic schools continue to study ICT as a course, most students in these schools would have to read in books instead of learning through practicals. Final year pupils of the Jema St. Peter's Junior High School shares with Joy News how the situation is affecting their performance in ICT. Amia Ose Isaac is one of them. It was affecting our ICT studies because there were, there were no computers here, so they just write it because there were no some ICT tools that they can use it to show us this is um, mouse, this is monitor, this is keyboard. We don't have. To improve this situation, the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communication, GIFEC, has donated brand new computers with accessories worth over 40,000 Ghana cities to the school. Mr. Aduja is the Director General of the Kofi Annan Center of Excellence in ICT. We are here to present this as a token. You know, ICT is the order of the day. You know, virtual learning, e-learning has taken serious um, dimensions because of this COVID-19. Computerization of schools are central to virtual learning. So we believe that presenting this to our school will enable them have the environment, the enablement to be able to partake in the virtual learning, e-learning that has taken place. So on this note, we're here to make this token, to make sure that the future of our youth are safeguarded and they are also part of the information technology. For the district chief executive for the area, Mr. Alex Jan, the donation of these computers is timely, adding that more schools within the district will be supported with computers. I think it's going to help us a lot because looking at the time, it's at the right, it, it came at the right time because of this COVID. All learning are now visual. And without this, we, I don't think it can be possible. So we've proposed a lot of schools in the district. Some has all been approved. So right away from here, he's also going to Accra to push it, say that we can have more schools with this ICT uh, equipment. The peoples are however optimistic that these computers will change and improve their knowledge in ICT as well as their academic performance. Queen Avala is one of these peoples. When the, like, when the student is given a homework and there's a need for him or her to make researches or more inquiries, so he or she has to go to the lab then make those uh, uh, inquiries. But since there was no computers and then so on and so on, the ICT uh, learning was about a bit down. But now uh, the computers and the design are in, I know it will improve our ICT learning. Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit, Jema. Well, that's it. The little news to bit. We have do we do have more news as we look at the newspapers right here in the studio. Do stay with us. We'll ride back. Achichidia Nanti, and that is Kujo Inchi, the good old Kujo Inchi featuring Stone Boy. That is steps. Yeah, that is walking. Well, that's a good one as well. And my lead producer chose a song. Uh, for the fiancé Anita, and uh, we'll have a Derek, of course, I'm good morning to you. But a good friend of mine, Tony Adams, uh, who works with the EIB group, Casapa, uh, the rest of the groups as well, one of the lead top sports broadcasters in Ghana. Tony Adams, good, good morning to you. You're celebrating the birthday of your son, uh, Jordi, and uh, Jordi Usuja is... Um, is a student of the Honey uh, Pot Academy 
uh, at Adenta. He turns four today. Um, this, this one is also coming from you as well as Tony. And then also the mother, Desiree Anderson Mensah, who currently is in uh, the Bronx in New York. Only, only pictures I've seen is of the Bronx is in, uh, coming to America and then also YouTube. But Tony Adams have a good one as well. And Seth, Seth Osei Bunsu, you are a psychiatric nurse with the Nkawe Government Hospital. This is your birthday today, and it's coming from your brother, Raffle. Now, uh, Gifty uh, Andoapia is online. Good morning to you. Uh, Gifty, how are you? Bro, bro, I'm blessed. How are you? I'm great. You seem to have had a very uh, tough night. You're not wearing your lens today. Is it broken? <laughs> no, it's not broken. It's here. You're very good. Very good. Gifty, now, uh, <laughs> Gifty, I miss you. Oh, <laughs> not having you in the office is some way be like that. Hey, Roland. Oh, true, okay, true. So I have some newspapers here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, we won't be romantic. I would design your man crisscross. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Where's Mamavi? Who's Mama Mama is like you. All of you have taken leave of absence. So, oh, uh, we're lean. We're, right. we're lean team it's now. We, we want you to come. We want you to come back. All of you. It's a fate. This too shall pass. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Uh, so that I go on with that quote is from which of the books in the Bible? Genesis. This, this shall, shall pass. Uh, I don't know where it is in the Bible. Maybe we should ask um, our boss of his question. <laughs> I know he's a, he's, a, he's a Pentecost elder. I know, right? Always good yeah. morning to you. Okay. Uh, Gifty, you're, you're doing which of the newspapers this morning? I'm doing the Finder newspaper um, uh, and then the NFT. Uh, do you have the Ghanaian Times? I want you to do the Ghanaian I Times. Do. Okay. I do. You so, want me to do the Ghanaian Times like now? Uh, as well, add it. Mm. Okay, sure. Okay. okay, so let me start with the final newspaper. Please do. The final newspaper comes with a story that I hope, you know, what I'm thinking is actually what it is. It says mobile testing of COVID-19, 100,000 to 300,000 tests to be conducted. And that story is on page two of the final newspaper. And government admonishes EC, security agencies, and citizens on COVID-19 protocols. It's also on page eight. And 770, wait, 779 health workers contract COVID-19. Nine of them are dead. Nine of them are dead. Uh, that story is on page five of the final newspaper. And um, easy to start registering of SHS students today. That story is also on page four as a story we've been running as well. Let's go through the inside pages of that newspaper. Uh, so you get to see a story like new biometric voter registration kits are robust and efficient. That's according to the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Madam Jean Mensah. And then the story about starting the registration process in schools today as well. Then AC chairperson not COVID-19 positive is a small story there as well. And then mass registration exercise disappointing. The EC should have used more technology. That's uh, Kwame Ahiabenu the second. It'll be interesting to hear his thoughts on that. Then EC reaches out with let the citizen know. And next page in that newspaper is um the story, that tragic, tragic, tragic story, that 779 health workers have contracted COVID-19. The most tragic part is that nine of them could not survive. Nine of them have died. May their souls rest in peace. Um, that story is there in the inside pages of the um, finder. And 437 1v1d small earth dams at various stages of completion. Okay. Another story, develop capacity of youth to enhance political participation, political parties charged. Okay. And the back page of the Finder newspaper is what I'm ending the Finder with. Ecobank Malcolm partner to provide convenient banking services. And government admonishes EC. That story is there. It comes with a picture of the information minister. Um, I beg your pardon. Information minister Kojo Ponkuma. And then government will never sell KIA or privatize Ghana Airport Company Limited. That's according to the aviation minister. And that's obviously on the back of the story uh, that's the, all the protests by the staff there 
because they we, they heard that the government was planning to sell the company to a Turkish uh, company. That's it for the finder. Should I go on with the BNFT? Yeah, please go on okay. with the BNFT. Sure. Um, so the BNFT's banner headline is to speak airport company is debt ridden as aviation minister. It's interesting if you look at how the 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 a BNFT is reporting, there's the angle that the BNFT is reporting and the angle that they um, find out was reporting. Find out is saying that they're not selling it. BNFT is saying that the company is debt ridden. So what is the story? Is it to say that it is debt ridden, so we had to let it go? Uh, that story is there on the front page of the finder. You want to take it, grab a copy and read it for yourself. But also another story there is the top to speed up infrastructure development, Africa must, and it lists what one, two, three, three things that Africa is supposed to be doing. One, limit political pressure on procurement process, improve transparency and control corruption. I'm praying for the day when we get there. <laughs> and another story <laughs> on the BNFT is government is implementing a holistic approach to irrigation in the north. I just wish that we stop paying lip service to this this you know this whole idea about developing the north and just do it. I mean, yeah, I don't know what's stopping yeah. us. But anyway, let me get on to the <laughs> inside the newspaper, uh, BNFT. GSE records 194 million Ghana cities in traded shares from January to June. Uh, corporate stigmatization looms over COVID-19 office closures. Interesting, interesting. This is where it has gotten to. An airport company is, bed, is debt, <laughs> debt ridden. That story is there in the inside pages. Um, to speed up infrastructure, that story also is there, the details. Government is implementing a holistic approach details there. Let me check the page for you again if you're interested. Yes, that's on page three of the Finder newspaper. Back page of the Finder newspaper. GIZ EU support Partners with PPE against COVID-19. Um, 100 entrepreneurs benefit from MBSSI wages project in Western region. Okay, devil is always in the detail. So uh, the BNFT for me and the finder as well. That's it for the BNFT and the finder. Maybe you should go uh, take, a, you know, have a go with one of the papers you have. Let me catch my breath and then I'll come to the Ghanaian Times, Roland. Yeah, I, mean, I noticed that you, your short, shortness of breath or something that's peculiar yes, this morning. Yes, Roland. Yeah, yes, ma. What's the <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any shortness of breath. Ah, uh, okay. Don't worry. It's, it's one <laughs> of the symptoms of COVID. So when you are home like that, then we begin to stigmatize you. Which paper do you have? <laughs> Well, let me start with the daily graphic. That was just on the side. It's not true. Um, she She's not infected in any way. Yeah, no so, one has asked you to justify. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, right? So we have the daily graphic. has on the front page, protectors at receiving end. COVID-19 hits hard at health workers. Now, just look at these figures. Daily graphic. Thank you for putting this on the front page. 799 contract virus. Nine so far have lost their lives. At least I, I know one of them, I know. Dr. Frank Ankobia, president of the Ghana Medical Association. You know, he doesn't pick our calls very often. So when he talks like that, then we know that he's serious. He's the president of the Ghana Medical Association. Mm. The story is on the front page. Hmm. Government not selling Kutuka International Airport, too, according to Aviation Minister. On the side, ambulance service responds to 2,797 COVID-19 cases. We've already been told that some of their staff also contracted uh, the disease as well over the period. A special voters registration for senior high school students starts today. Yeah. And then uh, we have on the back page, government 1V1D. We're talking one village, one day initiative for multi-purpose use. And there's a, a deputy minister of food and agriculture. No, sorry. The Minister of State at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Noura Jele, has stated that dams that are being constructed under 1V1D are for multi-purpose use and not only for agriculture. And you know, he's been talking the last two days because apparently the Pizan Farmers Association, they decided to put together an assessment or a survey or a research about how effective the 1v1ds were the one village one dam and their findings <laughs> were, were not good for government and since the minister has been on the 
Airways defending seriously. So that's why it's on the back page. We featured this on Joy News over the last couple of days, two days in a row. Uh, the Daily Dispatch has on the front page, NDC forms National Campaign Steering Committee. Being an economist is not a prerequisite for the vice president. According to Alice Mode, access to portable water in urban areas at 93%, according to the minister, that's a good one. Good one. And uh, the minister is Cecilia Abunadapa, former member of parliament for Bantima. Good morning to you, mom. Uh, compilation of voters register. And the ad is there, register now. We have the Daily Guide newspaper has on the front page, Capital Bank Case, Atuasian Trial Begins, has an attached picture of Mr. Atuasian um, on the side or down there. We have Asenso registers at Bantma, a raster that sorry, don't call, file that story for Joy News. Mahama sparks fury over his Veep. Kwewu chiefs angry over NDC River Cares. Uh, and then we have a uh, center spread. Oh, we didn't take, I didn't take this thing, the photo of this. Hush puppy. <laughs> I love this man. Very rich man. He's in the grips of uh, the security agencies in the Emirates sent to the U.S. currently. Hush puppy allegedly tests positive for COVID-19. I think this story, the people just want to drink. Uh, uh, back page, we have Pogba extending his Manchester United stay. A guy, he plays four months of good football for Manchester United and the rest of the months for Manchester United. He's always petulant and fuming. I don't know why it's a, but, you know, it's a good footballer, by the way. Uh, but he's hired Pellegrini. And then we have uh, Nanabi comments YEA Athletics Financial Support. Up there, we have Kotoko can develop Messi. Can develop Messi. Okay, and their Messi is Matthew Kujo. Until he's good. Very diminutive. On the front page of the custodian, that is uh, managed by Awudu Mahama. Good morning to you, my good friend Awudu Mahama. It has, um, you know, the compilation of the 20 voters register, what you need to know. And then also Jim Mensah, not COVID-19 positive. Closing down schools, not an option. Education minister on the side, again, is about coronavirus. It's dominating every, every news item these days. Government probes COVID-19 infections in schools. We're probing it. Okay. Kabila goes for CPP general secretary slot. And Gifty, I'm done. You have one more paper to do? Yes, please. Okay. I have the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Um, Ghanaian Times newspaper comes with a picture of the head of Noguchi. Of course, the story says Noguchi to ramp up COVID-19 testing, which is a story that we saw in the Finder newspaper as well. Uh, more test kits, lab equipment supplies arrive to address um, testing hiccups. That story is also on page 13. And pardon the uh, WhatsApp alerts that keep coming in because I've opened the WhatsApp on the computer. And when I mute, you won't hear me. So oh, I don't hear you. So uh, that story is on the Ghanaian Times newspaper with a picture of the head of Noguchi. More stories about COVID-19. EC begins nationwide registration of SHS students only. Story on page 11. COVID-19, minority asks governments to close down schools, page 4. Of course, government has said that's not the way to go. Stop COVID-19 spread in SHS's present direct task force. I don't know how they're supposed to stop the COVID spread. That story is on page 12. You want to take a look at that story. Get, I mean, understand what the president is trying to say, and perhaps it will make sense to you. Um, so Ghana's COVID-19 cases case count up 23,403, records 129 deaths. So... 129 people have died, 18,622 people have recovered. And of course, we do know that we have, um, we have, <clears throat> we know that we have, um, you know, reviewed our uh, criteria for who have recovered and who has been let go and all of that. Uh, let me just go quickly to the back page of the final newspaper. Come to the very nice picture of the Minister for Education. WIAC takes measures to protect WASI BEC candidate, candidates from COVID-19. Uh, it's by a Times reporter. 
that story is there as well. And Fossil Nyame uh, Shura Oil Palm Group gets 39,770 grant. Uh, so those are the stories I can tell you about in the Ghanaian Times uh, newspaper, Roland. Yeah. And, um, 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 well, you have any pick? Um, um, <laughs> I mean, my pick is, I mean, I, I'm very, uh, I think everybody is passionate about the frontline workers. Yeah. It's just sad. It's really sad that they're dying the way they are. Um, and they're saying that these are not even the worst times yet. When you talk to some of them, that's what they tell you. So... And I really don't know because it's not just us. There are other countries that are struggling here and there. So I don't know how to solve this. People have said that, you know, a lot of people have put the attention on the registration and they said that the registration is part of the problem, is part of the reason why it's spiking. They've added, they've, you know, pointed to the political programs that have been done recently by the government. NPP and said it's part of the reason why I I really don't know how we can stop this thing from spreading apart from uh, uh, urging everybody else to take the necessary precautions and because it's been said over and over again that it's each man for himself essentially God for us all but the argument about opening or closing up the schools I think yesterday I had uh, the CDD fellow uh, um, um, say Kwame say that for him it's closing the schools and taking the children home right now will essentially uh, enable spread of the virus because we don't know whether these other children that are left behind are also positive so if you take them out and take them home it's like you're just spreading the disease to the houses if they have it but I'm thinking how about we test them again we test them again and if they are okay we let them go you know because the argument is also that they are there to write the exam so once you brought them there let them just do the exams and let them go but i don't know i don't know how much more time they have to write the exams and i don't know how mentally stable they will be to write the exams in the first place first of all these are children i mean i've written a, a bc before i've written ssc before it's not easy even when you have the best of support at home it's not easy so for you to be in a place where you feel like you are in a fix you are a young person your mental capacity for example perhaps is not as robust you know you, you, your ability to absorb some of these things that happen in life to the, the, the trauma that comes with seeing that your friends, your colleagues have tested positive, someone has died, you know, I think it's a little too much for them mentally. I don't know, maybe I'm underestimating their ability, their mental capacities, but I think it's a little too much for them right now. And I don't know how it's going to impact on their ability to write the exams and pass. Um, yeah. I don't know how it's going to affect them. Yeah. I don't know how taking them, making them go home, testing them and making them go home will affect their lives yeah, in the future. Yeah, yeah. So these are the things that I think about. That's my, that would be my take. Yeah. The school and the, 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 the health workers who have tested um, um, positive. I do have another one, but let me hear your thoughts on this one. And I guess I will take yeah, it. And, and, and for me, the amalgamated groups, we have the Ghana Medical Association, we have the uh, nurses uh, midwifery council all coming together. We have the lab technicians. We have mm -hmm. the pharmacists. And then we have mm -hmm. the other general workers in health all coming together mm -hmm. to make the statement, led by somebody who doesn't speak very often, Dr. Frank mm -hmm. Ancobia. He's the president of the medical office. You and I produce, and we know that when you call him, he won't talk. Mm -hmm. It speaks. I don't recall listening or hearing him either. Exactly. I mean, I it speaks. It speaks. Hear, it yeah. speaks you volumes. Hear your physical justice, uh, 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 young saying, and you know. Exactly, and it speaks volumes to the issue. Look, I live at home with a health worker, and I tell mm -hmm. you, I can count the number of times that that person or she has gone to shops to buy PPEs because. Yourself. Yes. Because it's not available. It is not available. And I, I'm, I'm saying this on air for the first time. Mm -hmm. I, you have to do out your money to buy PP. I know that when you say these things, people in government don't take it. Uh, they take it personally. But the truth is that if you live with some of them, you will empathize with what they go through. 
That is why the caution, not only from her, but even the doctors who are my friends, some of them my mates, some of them my juniors who are doctors, some of them just my normal friends that I've talked to, they've simply said, we don't have enough of doctors per the population. And they're dying. I mean, the health workers are Great. dying. Great. We don't have enough of nurses per the population. If you look at the ratio, we don't have enough of lab technicians per the population. If you take the doctors, they are mainly in Accra, Kumasi, and some of the cities. Yeah. So that is why the, the, the cabin of the spread was important, so that we don't have more cases coming to the health facilities. Otherwise, the, the word is that they will be overwhelmed. So if hospitals and health facilities are overwhelmed, then we will be in trouble. So That's when, a very bad place to Exactly. Be. So yeah. that is why when they come out, we have to take it as seriously as we can. Look, we can do our own. We know that what has failed us is our inability to observe the protocols, but also mm -hmm. our inability as institutions and people put into public office to enforce the rules that we have set ourselves for us yeah. to observe these protocols. And yeah. that is the reason why we have the cases. If we are overwhelmed, everybody will get sick. And if everybody gets sick, it is mm -hmm. not necessarily the coronavirus that has killed you directly, but it's because we have other diseases that you get infected by that will kill you because the health system is overwhelmed. It's a very, it, that's the science behind the thing. I don't know what, when they are telling us the science and all that. And mm -hmm. Gifty, you and I, we have personally gone for tests because here at Joy News, we have colleagues who are infected. So you go on your own, the company has made all these things available for you. Go on your own to go and test. I have tested a number of times. The first time I got my result the next day. That's 24 <laughs> hours. I was happy. Subsequently, my fourth test, I get my I haven't gotten the results still. And I tested <laughs> and, I te four tests. and I tested a week ago. You're, you're in heaven. And you're even me, <laughs> and, and this one I'm talking about, it is uh, whom you know. I, be, I know, I know. I'm, I know I'm a journalist, so I know people. So whom you know, even whom you know, you get it after a week, you haven't gotten your results. The so, truth is there's pressure on Noguchi, which is why <laughs> I was interested in that story on the front page of both the Finder newspaper and the Ghanaian Times newspaper. There's a lot of pressure in Noguchi, and you can understand that. Listen, we can't pretend as if we're the only ones having this problem. But the point that people have made is that we have to have shown leadership from beginning better than we did. Look, in Germany, when this started, doctors went naked. They went on a naked protest. They took pictures of them almost naked and they put it on social media. They flooded social media with it. And they did that because they wanted uh, the government to listen to them. They were talking about lack of PPE. So look, this is Germany, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And you have their doctors going on a naked protest. It tells you how bad the situation is. So the situation is bad, we know. But we've been priding ourselves in being one of the countries in Africa that deals with this head on at the beginning. What is it that we are losing at, the, at, at this point? Like, are we letting, are we uh, 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 relaxing, you know, the energies that we put in in the beginning. I just, I just genuinely want to find out really what the problem is, because when you have, I have a, a doctor friend as well who I, I've been talking to, you know, trying to get advice on some of so a few things, and he was telling me that he had to deal with a cardiac arrest situation without uh, without PPEs because mm. the person was dying, mm. the person was dying, and everybody else around him was afraid to get close. <laughs> You know, he said they were just standing there. He said, I was so, he said, I was so mad. I was so mad. I was just watching them. They were just standing there and I had to quickly rush in to, to, to help this woman without PPEs. He did that. He took the risk because he didn't want the woman to die. Charlie. And I think that is the burden that health personnel put on themselves, trying to save people, trying to save the situation. But we have this a responsibility to save them so that they can be there for all of us um, once again. So I think that it's a, it's a very dicey situation, but we need to tackle it head on and stop doing the politics and stop, you know, playing around. I also think that the doctors, perhaps maybe they should have, um, you know, given it the serious and much more serious attention they're giving it now. Yeah, they should have done that maybe like two months ago. 
Exactly. Because, exactly. because, because for me, what, what they are journey. saying now about shortages, mm. uh, uh, even from March, <laughs> I've been because experiencing it. it. And, and I'm not saying I'm a health worker, but I experience it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying that the doctors in Germany took the matter, took it head on. And I think that we, since then, we have not heard anything like that in Germany anymore. It looks like the state authorities listened to them. I mean, that was a drastic measure. They went naked because they said, we go, this is how we go to the hospital. If you don't give us a PPEs, we go, we feel naked. This is how we feel. We feel yeah. naked. We feel exposed. Saleh Gifti, so, our time is up. You know how the broadcasting yeah. time is. So... I know, I know, but let me just quickly chip this in that there is also the problem, the other story that I was uh, passionate about is the peasant farmers. The fact that these are people on the ground and they're saying that we're not feeling the impact of what you are I doing. agree, I, I, I agree. Want to tell governments, I want to tell government that, look, stop the PR, it won't help you. Yeah. Go to the ground and get the work done for your right. own election sake. I, I think that's just what I wanted to put in there. Charlie, so, you're a PR consultant, marketing communication strategist. <laughs> yeah. Gifty and appear. Well, um, I read this wrongly. Tony Adams sent me this the lead broadcaster spores when it comes, but actually, this is it. He, uh, he's not a father, so I have to read this. Otherwise, disclaimer Happy birthday to my lovely son, Jordi Ousu Jain of Honeypot Academy at Denta, who turns for today. I love you, son. It's from your mom, Desiree Anderson Mensa of the Bronx, New York. Tony has this no... one should know how special he is that we <laughs> yeah, have, you know, we didn't have time, but we had to put this in for him. He's really special. God bless him. I wish him a happy birthday. Amen. Too. Amen. Amen, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor, you see, my internet has been very stable today. I've been wondering. I think you, you prayed well overnight because I know that you wake up to pray very often. So Yes, I did. I did. Pa. But I think it's because Inshirado is not here today. Mm, so. <laughs> okay, well, bye bye. <laughs> Charlie, coughing is one of the symptoms of. Hey, Charlie, what is yeah, happening? Right. <laughs> We're taking a break. When we come, the spotted lights for you. <laughs> Hello out there, it's a Friday morning, time to update you in the world of sports. You know how we do it on a Friday, preview Friday. We look ahead to what we expect this weekend and also we'll try and show you highlights of matches that we have played. But this morning, uh, we'll be doing a lot of chat uh, on the UEFA Champions League. You know, the round of 16 uh, tie uh, will be uh, at the home venues of the teams. And of course, uh, the draw uh, for the quarterfinals, semifinals uh, will be held uh, today. So we'll see how... Uh, that will go with my colleague Jordan the junior will join me later. Also, uh, we'll try and look at what, as I mentioned earlier, we'll build up to the weekend, of course, give you fixtures of matches to expect in the various uh, major European leagues. Uh, the Disney bubble, the Disney world, that's the MLS uh, is on uh, with Ghanaian players in there. Yesterday, you heard Jonathan Mensah. Well, this morning, uh, we'll speak to another Ghanaian player. He's in Austria. What a season he had uh, with his uh, club. That's uh, Red Bull Salzburg winning a double, the Austrian Cup, and also winning uh, the Austrian League for the very first time since joining the side. He joined them in 2017 from Wapa, went on loan, came back, went on loan again. Finally, uh, ended up at the side that's uh, Red Bull Salzburg and played 20 games, scored two goals with three assists this season. I'm talking about Majid Ashimero. Majid, thanks so much for joining me this morning all the way from Austria. Ah, you're welcome, you're welcome. How are you? I'm good. good. Hmm. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Yes, I was asking, I hope everything is fine with you there. Yeah, everything is fine, everything is good. We are done with the league, I'm just, I'm just home, so everything is fine. That's great. Well, let's talk about the league. 20 appearances, you scored two goals, three assists. On top of it, you won two titles. That's yeah. the Austrian Cup as well as uh, the Austrian Bundesliga for the very first time in your career. This definitely is a good season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it is. It is because, I mean, winning, uh, winning two titles in a season. I mean, it's, it's. Uh, I mean, everyone, everyone who we, I think everyone will, will know that. I mean, this, this, uh, this is a good season for me because I mean, two seasons. It's. I mean, one, one season, two titles is is, is something that uh, I mean, every player wish to get in the season. So I think it's a, it's a great season. At the start of the season, did you anticipate this? No, no, but you know when 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 you are when you are playing uh, a team like Red Bull, I mean it's all about winning titles. So from the first from the first start of the of the league, we our our aim was to I mean 
to be the champion. So I think we we gave all out, and uh, by the grace of God, we were, we were the champion. So I think it's, it's the aim we we target from the start. In terms of your contribution uh, to the team in winning the league cup as well as uh, the league title, uh, how do you rate it? Yeah, I would say I I, I played uh, I also played the. Um, a major role in the in the league. In, I mean, in the in the in the in the club because uh, I mean I, I I mean two goals with two assists in uh, in twenty games, and uh, I mean I, I before the the end of the the league, the last ten games I was playing more as a as a defensive midfielder, so I couldn't get more chances in the in the up front. But I think I played uh, I played a, a quite good role in the in the, in the winning the champions. It doesn't really come easy for a player, you know, to go to Austria and win two titles in a season. How do you hope to build on this going forward? Yeah, I hope. Uh, I hope I, will, I, will, I mean, I will, I will get more titles in the in the future because I mean, I mean, when you are winning titles, then I mean, uh, it's, it's it's a great feeling, and I mean, these are things you you played for. Yeah, I mean, you you play you play because of winning titles and. Uh, and um, so I think uh, this is something that uh, I think winning two titles now I mean, makes me feel like there's more there's more to come and there's more I can uh, I can win when uh, when going forward and when working hard. So I believe in uh, in working hard and, and staying focused. And I hope there's uh, there's more titles to come my way. And in terms of winning more titles, as you mentioned uh, with Red Bull Salzburg, if I get, understand, then it means that uh, you're going to stay there for some time. I mean, there are, there are so many teams that that are winning titles. So I I I, I, don't, I have I have a contract with Red Bull five years. So I don't know what what next season it's, it's gonna bring. You know, because in football everything happens. The next season you are here. The next season you are here. So I I believe and hope I'll 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 be in um I'll be in a in a good team as Salzburg. If not if not Salzburg, then also a good team like Salzburg. That's awesome. Next season, you get an opportunity to play in the UEFA Champions League. Last season, you played in it. This season, actually, you played in it. I remember uh, you were at Anfield to play against Liverpool. You were in the same group with Liverpool. Well, unfortunately, you guys are not uh, at the Champions League. I know the draw will be low today. Uh, with the second leg tie, is already decided as to where they'll be played. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you, aside Salzburg, you definitely have a favorite. You definitely support some of the teams. So, with the teams left, which one, which one of them do you think uh, this season can win a UEFA Champions League. Mm, I would say I'll, I'll, I'll go for Barcelona. Barca. Okay, yeah. I thought that's <laughs> <laughs> why not Bayern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, I mean, the, I support. I, I, I mean, uh, Salzburg is a, it's a team I support and, and play for. So okay. I'll, I'll go for Salzburg any day. But when when we are not in the competition, I, well, I think I, I have to go for. Barcelona because I love I love to see them playing and um, I mean Messi I mean everyone wants to see Messi playing so that's exactly yeah. Majid thanks so much for the time this morning really yeah, really yeah. appreciate it yeah. uh, so that was uh, Majid Ashimo joining me all the way from Austria very lovely uh, chat there with a man who's won two titles this season with Red Bull Salzburg and he says uh, he's keen on winning more titles uh, with a side. Well, we, we ended the, our conversation on the UEFA Champions League notes, and of course, that's where we go to because the one of uh, 16 ties uh, have been decided in terms of where they'll be played. You know, all the issues that are going on uh, in the world. So, what it means is that the four remaining one of uh, 16 ties all will be uh, played at the home venues of the teams. So, remember, Chelsea played with uh, with, uh, with Bayern Munich at Stamford Bridge, which they lost by three goals to know. So, what it means is that Chelsea now. Uh, we'll go to the Allianz Arena for the second leg. And we also will have the Barca Napoli. Napoli will go to Camp Nou. Uh, Manchester City, Real Madrid. Real Madrid uh, lost the first leg and the ball by two goals. But now they will come uh, to the ETR Stadium with the other game. That's, I think uh, that's going to be uh, Inter Milan. Yes. Uh, is it? No, Juventus Lyon. Uh, Juventus Lyon. Lyon lost. Uh, Leon won by voting all in the first leg, so we'll see how that will go. My colleague George Lazzi Jr. joins me. George, you guys are in Chelsea. You think you can go to the Allianz Arena uh, to cause <laughs> to, to win and, and qualify? George, well, I can hear you loud and clear. I cannot hear you. If you can, please unmute your mic for me. Yeah, all right, George. I think you can hear me now. Can you hear yeah, me I now? Can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, just, just to make the point, I was saying that I think that Chelsea would love to 
enjoy the fact that we are part of the draw. You normally have to qualify to be in the quarterfinal to be part of the draw, but this time we get to be part of the draw. That's the first part. Uh, the next side is, can we travel to Germany and get the job done? Um, we lost the first leg by three goals to nil. It's a bit of a Herculean task and anything is possible in football, but Bayern Munich finished the season really, really well and they are cooling off. It will be a very, very, very adios tax if Chelsea can do it. If Chelsea can do it, that will be really, really fun. The last time Chelsea did turn around, um, such a huge deficit was against Napoli and really in the run where Chelsea won the Champions League in 2012. So if it's going to happen, if Chelsea overturns this result, then maybe it's going to be Chelsea's year, but it's not too likely, no. <laughs> All right, so uh, the Chelsea Bayern is one of uh, four games that will be played. Yeah. Now, yeah. you think Chelsea will make it? Which other three teams uh, you think will get to the quarterfinals and then quickly we'll look at the draw? I think it's very difficult to talk about the rest of the three because Lyon played very well. The problem for them is that they have um, they, they ended the French season so early. I'm not too sure what kind of shape they are in. Juventus are still playing. So you feel that going back to Turin to play against Juventus, Juventus, they have the advantage. But Juventus have not been impressive. We saw them lose to AC Milan by four goals to two. You know, So, yeah, that's a very tight one. I may try to put Juventus slightly ahead. Now, the Barcelona-Napoli game as well is so tight. It was 1-1 well in the first leg. They are going to the Camp Nou. I expect Barcelona to win the Camp Nou because they have a fantastic record. I think it's 15 in 16 games at the Camp Nou this season. So they should be able to get over the line. But even that, they have to be careful because they have not been totally convincing. Then the last tie is even more dangerous because Real Madrid and Manchester City, it looked one-sided yeah. in the first leg. But after, I mean, coming back after COVID, things have changed. Real Madrid are playing well. They have Eden Hazard. Man City are also playing well. So that tie... It's really, really, really in there and so, so balanced. Any one of those two teams, I think, can qualify to the quarterfinals. Mm, and Barca as well. Barca in there. Uh, so yeah, Barca. Well, I, I think the Barca, I, I expect Barcelona to qualify because they have a very good home record. That's why I'm going to say they will qualify. But aside that, it will be very tight because Napoli could be very dangerous as well. Then we should expect a tricky quarterfinals draw. Very, very, very tricky quarterfinals draw. And Benedict, you know what makes this campaign even more interesting is the fact that you are doing it over 90 minutes. You are doing it over 90 minutes. Straight away, it puts the likes of Paris Saint-Germain, Atlanta, all have a chance now. Because for Paris Saint-Germain, we've said that they've not been able to concentrate over two legs. When it's come to the first leg, they've always done the job. They beat Barcelona three seasons ago. They beat Real Madrid two seasons ago. They beat Manchester United two seasons ago. So if you're giving them 90 minutes, they can do something here. So I think we've got a very um, wonderful draw coming up. And anything is possible from here. Anything is possible. Everyone has a chance now. George, I know you have to go to radio, so thank you so much. Yes, there. yes, yes, yes. There's more in the locker room, actually, uh, later this afternoon. Sure. Absolutely. So you have to join George Adjani you know, on radio at exactly uh, 1.15 p.m. on Joy 99.7 FM. There'll be more. So this is Ghana's current situation. We have the up-to-date case count. As of the last time we were updated, 23,463 confirmed cases. And this is indicative of the number of the active cases, 4,717 recoveries, 18,622, and only 129 fatalities. If you compare to other countries, we add... We seem to be doing well, but it's the number of the incrementals that people are worried about, the positivity rates within a seven-day period. That's gotten many of the experts uh, worried. Uh, as of the last case count, per the report, we had new cases, 641. It is indeed a reduction from the a little over 800 that had been witnessed uh, the last two counts or the last two updates. But this is where we have to get the conversation going. Because apart from the various um, associations of medical personnel and experts uh, coming together for that press conference and then telling the country how serious the situation is and letting the public know that it looks like we're losing the fight against COVID-19, there is the added conversation about why we're recording a number of cases 
across schools, senior high schools, especially for now, because on the other hand, we do have the last years of junior high schools to prepare them for the West African Examination Council, BEC, who are, are, are also in school and at risk. We also do have third years, or so the last years of various universities also in school, and that's a concern that has been expressed by experts, by uh, some of the spokespeople for the political parties, the minority, and even some of the health experts. So today we want to put all these matters into perspective. In doing that, we have to speak to the experts who have the know-how and the knowledge about the spread among groupings, population, demographics, etc. So we're going to speak to Dr. Kofi Amega, and um, he is an epidemiologist and also the head of the Department of Clinical Nutrition, the UCC. Um, Sabine Heresy, uh, I'll ask her the, the, how to pronounce the right name. I've seen her nodding already, so I think uh, I'm right. Uh, Sabine Heresy, uh, how do you pronounce your, your surname? Heresy, it's really French, but uh, if it's more comfortable for you to say Heris, it's okay with me. Okay, so Heris is nice, it's better. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, great. And then Isaac J. Hyde represents um, the National Union of Ghana student. He is the boss there, the president. So, um, uh, Isaac, uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, th thanks again, Dr. Kofi Megan, for joining us for this conversation. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I love the voice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that we're laughing, but it's not a laughing matter, is it? Uh, um, let, 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 let me start first with you, um, Dr. Kofi Megan. What you have monitored over the last one week, we're not talking <clears throat> school matters. We're talking case count, positivity rate over a seven-day uh, period. W what does it tell you as a, 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 as a scientist? Well, um, Roland, let me, a very good morning to your viewers who have tuned in this morning to listen to us as we have this discourse on the COVID-19 situation in the country. Um, it's worrying times, I have to admit, because um, the confirmed cases are increasing on a daily basis. Um, I've listened to a few people, government people, and they talk about the fact that I think the last time you had an interview with the Deputy Minister of um, Health, he talks about the fact that because we have ramp up testing in the country, that is the reason why we are seeing a lot of cases, which is fine. I mean, that tells you that testing is really not an artifact, you know, of, of, uh, of the COVID-19. COVID-19 is not an artifact of the testing. But again, in recent times, I heard one of the seasoned epidemiologists in, in the country, Fred Binker, I mean, talk about the fact that if we really don't step up our game, we're going to hit 50,000 cases not too soon. So it is worrying times. Um, the key question is that are the mitigation measures not working? Well, it's something we interrogate as we get deeper into the show. So I think that will be my initial um, submission. Mm. Uh, National Union of Ghana Students, uh, Isaac, I you are monitoring. Yeah, you are monitoring the cases as they travel through the schools. Um, we we have the formal announcement that are, that is agreed. Uh, with the Ghana Education Minister of Health. And then as reporters, as journalists, we also have our sources about number of increases. That is very much informal. And so there, there's what we can put out there and what we cannot put out there. But per what you have monitored, wh what does it tell you across the schools? Well, thank you very much. And um, a good morning to your viewers. Well, I must say that the, 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 the growing number of cases, the worrying trend, and um, we are only grateful or happy that at this stage we have not recorded any death, notwithstanding that even if one student falls, it's, it's quite a problem to us and parents as well. But um, it's a worrying trend, and um, we've noticed quite a number of challenges when we, we took a tour of uh, one or two schools. Um, observing the protocols is, is, is becoming quite a challenge, and I think that we need to intensify our education across the campuses. But Largely, it, 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 it's a worrying trend. Mm. Uh, uh, Sabine, uh, and I, I want to call you by the first name because uh, that's easier for me. But uh, if 
and, and because you are a child mental health counselor, and I believe on the psychological part, it will mean that we have to look at the objectives for which all these schools uh, and the students have been recalled. They are supposed to be writing examinations. It means that they have to be in the right state of mind. Now, from the clinical point of view, how does the actions that happen outside the environment which they study tend to influence them psychologically or mentally? Yes, good morning to you and all the joint news viewers. Thank you for having me. It's a very difficult situation for our students here in Ghana and their, their parents. Uh, of course, the, 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 the anxiety and the stress surrounding this COVID-19 crisis is affecting students, their ability to focus, stay on, stay on task, and be you know, performing to the maximum ability. So my role would be to assist uh, students and their families and their parents to cope, to find ways, practical ways, to cope with the crisis. We cannot change the environment, but there are ways to, to learn to relax, to uh, see things in a relative way and to be able to focus on, on our tasks. So what we do here at uh, EAP, I'm with EAP Africa, what we do is train, train parents to uh, assist their children during this difficult time. But we do know that um, the, the student, and I, I'm still with you, Sabine, the students are supposed to learn uh, and in an environment in which they can concentrate. In such times, what ideally should be the help? Um, let's say teachers on one hand, health personnel, the administrators uh, on the other hand, and then the parents. So the key things, and we're talking about uh, high school students, right? Teenagers, is that correct? In that category, yes, for now. So I think what is key is uh, to listen uh, and uh, for teachers, staff, everybody around these, these students to listen to the anxiety. Let them express what worries them. That makes a very big difference for us, for adults to listen to these children and be honest with our, our you know, assessment of the situation. They will have questions. They will have worries. And us as adults, our role is to be honest. We don't have all the answers. But I, I believe that just being present and acknowledging their anxiety, their stress, their worries makes a big difference. And that's the starting point, to acknowledge that there is a, a discomfort, anxiety, and stress. So I think that's the best, the, start, the first start. Yeah. Dr. Kofi Amega, you've been through secondary school in Ghana. You know that what Sabine is saying is that that be talk doesn't happen. You can't even approach your... <laughs> so, so how does it clinically make it difficult for students to navigate through these times, clinically? You know what, you know what, Roland, let me first begin by providing some context for the rising cases in school. And I'm, I'm sure it's something that resonates with everybody who has been to a secondary school. You know what, in secondary schools, there's overcrowding. You know, the dormitories are overcrowded, assembly halls are overcrowded, classrooms are overcrowded. And to add to that, there is poor ventilation. These are conditions that enable the virus to try. You know, we talk about the nutritional status of school children. It's very poor. You go to the dining halls. What foods are they feeding them? You know, these foods are not nutritious, you know? And I mean, the last time I was on your show, I mentioned the fact that the president has always been admonishing us to have proper nutrition. And if you're in a secondary school, are you going to have an enhanced nutrition? I'm sorry, you know, it's not gonna happen. You know, ignorance is also a key role in secondary schools and other educational institutions. When students have money as a result of their parents providing them with some little money to feed themselves, so what do they spend the money on? On junks, you know, sweet, energy-dense foods that are non-nutritious, you know, poor hand-washing practices in schools because they don't have the infrastructure. How many schools have Veronica bucket? In my department here, we had to buy a Veronica bucket and put it here. But under normal circumstances, government will provide us with some very capital so that we can distribute them all around the university so that hand washing facilities can be easily done. That's not to say the university is not doing. They are doing a lot by putting sanitizers and all those things around the places. So my university is doing well in, in that front, you know. Then again, in schools, management hardly pays attention to our health concerns. They don't. It's not something that is at the top of the agenda. Sorry to say that, 
You know, do they have vehicles that when we have severe cases, they can transport them easily? Do they have infirmaries? You go to these infirmaries, they don't even have the medical supplies, you know? So this is the context, you know? So not until we start to address some of these structural challenges, I'm afraid the cases might go up, you know, the cases might go up. But, you know, just to sum up, you know, there has to be a balancing act, you know, because the key question is that, can we say schools should not open, you know? The allegations that has been leveled against the government is fair in the sense that, you know, we need to open schools safely, you know, but opening schools safely means we need to balance this infrastructure I'm talking about and also the fact that there is always community spread. So how much is the virus spreading in the communities? So if the virus is spreading in the communities, then of course students and staff are going to contract it and bring it to the schools. You know, so the key question, the allegation against government was that, why do you open schools when the case count was increasing? But as a parent, I myself, I want my children to go to school because it affects their mental health when they are at home. You, they need to go socialize. They need to go talk to friends. You know, they need to associate with their teachers. You know, and this is something they've been sitting at home for three months and they are missing. And the pediatricians and the child psychologists will tell you that it's affecting the mental health of some of the students. So, you know, it is a balancing act as to whether we got it right or wrong. Again, it's something we will come to later in the show. Thank you. Now, Isaac, um, the Ghana Education Service told us that they did due consultation. Were you also included? And if you were included, what were your views? Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, we made a number of recommendations to the ministry that um, and government that if schools are to be reopened, we, we expect to see a number of things, um, such as the provision of um, the rolling cover kits, the, the, the training of teachers and, 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 and other amenities. Yes, we're giving a lot of these assurances and um, we saw some of these things deployed. Uh, from the onset, my, ch my personal challenge from my perspective was that it is one thing having those things in place and it's another thing ensuring that at every point in time, it has the contents to, 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 to serve the purpose for which it was put there. So, for instance, if you have a very car bucket at a vantage place and there's no water in it, if you have um, a container for a hand sanitizer, and at, any, at a point in time, students have used this hand sanitizer and um, it's finished in there, how do you restock it? And uh, this has been a challenge. But uh, indeed, yes, we, we, we had several engagements with the relevant stakeholders. Um, you cannot also put the issues out blatant on government because sometimes the institutions equally um, have a role to play here. I mean, sometimes people must be conscious and I think that that's where our teachers um, have also liked the bed, but also because perhaps the, if the training had, had really gone down there, it would have helped. But um, we, we also see a situation where most of the campuses, people would rather shy away rather than intervene. And um, I think it's a national problem beyond COVID that we should be interested in. How we pay attention to our immediate issues. Um, one of the things that um, we had requested as at the time schools were to be reopened was the need for students to be tested across the country. But um, as I speak to you, we have 1.2 million students. Um, our testing capacity has not even reached 400,000 since the uh, country recorded the first case. And so it looked almost impossible as at that time to say that, yes, we need to test each and every student before schools are reopened. What we could make out of that thing was a gradual process and also people being more vigilant. And so um, it's a collective responsibility where I believe that one way or the other, um, all the stakeholders involved in this have, have, have to a larger extent uh, failed on our part. Mm. And um, uh, 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 Sabine Heresy, if you, you know how Africa is, we, we have a certain sociocultural way of thinking and behavior. How does that, in all this, influence the behavior pattern of the student within, all the, or within the context of all the things and the information that we've been churning around? Well, of course, uh, the cultural, you know, Landline land of, 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 of Ghana affects the way uh, we behave, but my role is to uh, help those children 
uh, focus, those young people focus on what they can control. I agree with Dr. Kofi, there are a lot of challenges, uh, practical challenges on campuses, but uh, to help maintain and boost the mental wellness of these students, my role is to, to show them what they can control. They can, you know, they can be taught to make the appropriate the nutritional uh, food to buy before going to study. They can you know, be taught to have good sleep hygiene, uh, spend enough, enough uh, hours to be able to be ready for, for learning, and uh, also uh, learn how to protect themselves when they are on campus. So there's small things that these students can be taught to do that they can feel that they can control because there's many things that they cannot, as Dr. Kofi uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, 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 yes, Kofi? And who, yes. and, and who should be doing that? The mental health counselor, somebody like me, who would come and talk to and you know build relationship with the students. Ah, but, and, who, uh, but maybe you don't know Ghana. Well. Mental health work, well, we don't have them all. Well, in which school? We don't have them. Which school? We don't have them in Ghana schools. So, so we know we need to encourage the government to look at the importance of mental health counselors in schools. Uh, EAP Africa is the first, uh, the first of its kind on this continent, on the continent in West Africa and in Ghana, where we really uh, focus on the mental wellness of not only uh, children, parents, but also workers. Mm. Uh, I think there's, you know, I've met many, many young people and parents, people are getting more open to the idea of mental wellness. And uh, I'm not going to be discouraged and I know that Ghana will eventually be open, and the Ghanaians will be open to uh, looking at mental wellness and how it affects their impacts their daily life and their happiness. Yeah, it's a continuous conversation, isn't it? <laughs> but but the, Dr. Kofi Megan, the reality is that um, the World Health Organization has observed, and you, the scientists, also have uh, uh, agreed that we have a, a young population, so they, they, are, they are more robust, is that not it? So why should, why should we be worried when we know these are the categories that are in the schools? <laughs> Roland, that's a very good question, you know. Again, the last time I was here, I, I said I'm very skeptical about the pronouncement from WHO that, I mean, we are the next epicenter of the COVID-19. And it, it boils down to the fact that we have a young population and over the years we have been afflicted by infectious diseases so we have built immunity but we should be concerned you know there is there is a lot about the disease that we don't know and there is a lot to that we know and it's imperative that the guidelines national guidelines international guidelines are influenced by what we know i must admit that most of them are junk science you know Scientists are also trying to cash in on COVID-19 so that overnight they become celebrities. Sorry to say that, you know. But what is important is that, I mean, um, um, for high school children, secondary school children, they can transmit, you know. They have much milder forms of the disease. You know, you don't see the severe cases among them as you see in the older population. And they have milder forms, but they can transmit. I mean, below 11 years, there's some slight evidence that is emerging that they cannot transmit. But again, what you need to understand is that these students have very close contact. Unlike you and I, who are very careful where we go, where we sit. I mean, as you are in the studio now, you have your mask, you know. I'm in an enclosed office now, nobody coming in. And um, in front of my office, I've indicated boldly in black and white that if you don't have a nose mask, don't enter my office. You know, children are in close contact with people. So, of course, they can transmit the disease. Once they transmit, then they are also going to transmit in their homes. And then there's that community spread. So even though we have a younger population, which stands against the severity of infection, the transmission patterns and the viral prevalence, sorry, will go up. You know, so that's the unfortunate thing. So it's important that we try to stem um, um, transmission in the schools, you know. Yeah, uh, and uh, that ultimately will mean, uh, Isaac, the, the Ghana Education Service may have had a certain inclination mm -hmm. that, look, we want to bring them in a very controlled environment. How did you agree 
with the authorities that the environment could be controlled. Because I'm thinking any typical campus is a controlled environment. Yes, um, Roland, I think that Oh, uh, your, your connection. I'm hoping that you can get back to uh, it. raised an issue about congestion on the computer. That this particular, um, each and every classroom was to have not, uh, more than 20 students. And of course, even in the dormitories, um, we need to space out. And so, given that it was only final year students who were permitted initially to be on, on the campus, it means that there was enough space to, you know, uh, congest the various dormitories. Um, put that aside, there was also the monitoring team. So there's a monitoring team that periodically will go through the campuses to be checking to see if indeed the schools are observing the relevant protocols. And so um, it is one thing having, you know, the, 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 the framework or the, the, the guidelines there, and it's another enforcing them. And so this is where the problem is, how we go about to ensure that indeed the schools are monitored. Having said that, just like Doc said, um, when you are dealing with uh, young children, you cannot necessarily control how they, they relate. In fact, even we as, um, as young guys, sometimes you are working with your colleagues and you tend to assume that by they being immediate close contact, everybody is fine. So sometimes you, you, you tend to put your nose back aside. In fact, if you go to the senior high school, what we really realize is that sometimes the thought that, oh, this is somebody I share a common space with, we are fine, we are, we are talking, people seem to forget themselves and not pay too much attention to um, the use of the nose masks and observe some of the relevant protocols. But education and sensitization is key in this, in, in, in this arena. And in fact, including the management, the teachers and the, and, the, and the heads of schools themselves. Because you see, that's where the psychological uh, issue also comes in. Take uh, what happened at KUSD, for instance. You have a situation where a kid um, is suspected of having a case. I would expect that the students will be the ones running away for the teachers to, you know, more or less come in as, you know, not some form of machismo, but people who more or less understand the issues. Perhaps if they, they would have uh, some school, you know, sort of administer some help to the students. But the teachers give the impression that they are free. Well, we're having difficulty with your connection there. Because they needed to help their colleagues. But if you understand, students understand the nature of the disease they have education, it would have, have helped. And that is what is lacking at this stage. And so there's no amount of, you know, monitoring uh, or, you know, follow up to how students observe on campus. We, there's a the collective responsibility on everybody's part. Because if I go and contract it and I come to your space, you may not have done, you may have done the right thing. But if you do not get the sense that I may be a career, I mean, first you would OK. But, uh, but Sabine, we do understand that once we have young people and they, they have better robust uh, bodies and can withstand the virus than we the adult. It means that the caution should rather be on the on, on the teachers and the and, and and the other administrators. Of course, they have even counselors, only not clinical counselors, but but in that respect, right? And how should they do that? Well, I, I want to leave the medical uh, advice to uh, Dr. Kofi. Uh, apparently, young people are less uh, less affected by this, uh, or the, their symptoms are less severe than the symptoms of older people who, are, who get the COVID-19. But uh, whether or not uh, they're more susceptible, it's a very stressful environment for everybody, students, staff, teachers. And um, we cannot escape it in all school campuses. The situation is very challenging. Uh, our role as adults is to protect uh, these young people physically and also to protect their psyche, their mental wellness. And uh, it's a very challenging thing for everybody. Uh, not only we have to take care of the kids, but us adults, we, we must take care of ourselves as well. 
uh, healthcare workers, uh, healthcare administrators, teachers. Uh, it's very stressful. So uh, what you know, my role is to, if somebody calls me, is to show them how to to do some self care, relaxation. There's many techniques that you can learn uh, to uh, to breathe and and focus on the moment. Uh, but it's a, it's an extreme challenge for okay. everybody, even for me, the counselor, to live in this time of COVID nineteen. All right. Um, Dr. Kofi Amaga, you are not only a scientist, you've been through the rudiments of Ghana schooling, so you don't have a problem. Couldn't we have asked the students whether they are in the thousands of them, I'm told they are around 300,000 going to write BEC. Couldn't we have asked them to study at home and converge at their examination centers and go and write the examinations? No. But before I answer that, let me add up to um, my sister Sabine's um, submission. You know, as I said, there is a lot we don't know about the disease. And um, you pose the question that these young people have very robust, I mean, systems, you know, bodies. So they should be able to withstand the effect of the virus. Um, not necessary. You know, there is also some evidence that suggests that the virus can have some devastating effects, even after you have finished your course, you've been attacked and you have recovered. You know, it could be mental, and even the stigmatization. I mean, in the schools, the moment they tell you that, oh, Kwame has COVID-19, I mean, it could be very traumatic. So even though they have the robust body systems that could withstand all the shocks, I think um, that shouldn't be the reason why we should allow the virus to, to filter in, in, in the schools. But to come back to your question, um, can you remind me again, please? Yes, it's about, could we have made a decision that, look, they should study at home for two months, three months, and go and write the exam at an examination center, socially distanced? It's a very uh, simple you, thing. You know what? They are, um, they are, they are, I'm, I'm asking this because there are students, there are parents who decide that my child will test YEC second year, and third year will test again. And they decide to choose which of the results they would want their children to be admitted <laughs> to in schools. You know, that's interesting. I, I don't agree, you know. Uh, even though I've been through the rudiments of the system, I don't agree. Learning at home is a very difficult experience. I mean, brother, you, you and I know, you know, every minute you are in the kitchen to pick something to eat, you want to go watch your show, you want to go watch other TV shows. So, I mean, you can't balance that with studies. No, not at all. It can happen. I mean, you know, when this thing started, the universities, my university and several other public universities, I've been using the virtual education where we go online and teach the students. But for me, again, that is a pale shadow of the raw thing. You know, the challenges that we have, and I'm glad you have the, the biggest student union leader here, you know, he will tell you, they themselves don't come online, you know. Um, our internet services are very poor, you know, so it's not an effective mode of teaching. And you have to also understand that the virtual education is alien to our system. I mean, I mean, I have to admit, some of the universities have just started doing it because of the COVID-19. So overnight, we're not going to get there. So we need to get them to schools. I mean, in other jurisdictions, the students are in schools and they are managing the situation. So what I'm just trying to say is that it has to be a balancing act. So I don't agree that we could allow the students to be at home, read, learn, and go right. They will bomb. I mean, let me use this. Maybe that's not a familiar term with um, Sabine, but that means there will be massive failure, you know? Yeah. So it's not something that I'll advocate. But we need to look at balancing the equation such that we can have the children in school, the school kids in school, but also we can stem transmission of the virus. Mm. OK. Now, um, I'm just um, reading this from the BBC. And the BBC published this on June 20. And it says, effect of coronavirus on youth and women. And it enumerates that the effect is more mental than, on a, than a strain on the body. Sabine, Dr. Kofia Megan says that a balancing act, I don't understand that phrase. I'm thinking my children should be at home and steady and then go, even though I know that it will be difficult. Now, if we want to be in the middle, balancing act, how do we go about this? Getting the students in school and making sure we prepare them for the objective why they are there. 
It's a very uh, challenging question to balance the need for education, for quality education, and they need to protect their physical health and their mental health. Uh, on one side, keeping children at home affect their mental health in the way that they are not connected with their peers. They may not have the proper internet uh, connections to be able to follow their class. So that would create a lot of distress, not being able to, to study, to complete their exams. But the other hand is sending them to school and exposing them to disease. So how do you balance that? This is the continuing discussion between the healthcare workers, the government, the education system. Uh, and I think every, every government in, on this planet right now has to balance these two options. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add as well, um, Dr. Kofi uh, mentioned the stigmatization. We have to, you know, mental health counselors like me have to help those students who were who tested positive with being rejected, stigmatized by their peers and maybe also the adults in, 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 uh, in their schools. Also, we have to think about those students who lost family members, loved ones to the disease. So grief has to be addressed. Their grief, the trauma associated with disease has to be addressed uh, by a mental health counselor uh, in different ways. Yeah. Uh, Isaac, let me pose this. And this one was sent to me by lawyer, entrepreneur, and then broadcaster Samson Ladi Anyanini. And I'll read the whole thing to you, and then I'll pose a question. It says, by the EI, by the president, schools may open, of course, subject to following all the protocols, and students may return to school. Now, we do understand the GES has confirmed that students who, for one reason or the other, don't feel assured of protection in school can study on their own and only go to write the examinations. Now, it continues. Though they are not encouraging too much of that, why not focus on online activity? There must be a reason the law doesn't compel reopening and returning to school. Isaac, answer this for me. You're a student leader, so I, I, I'm sure you can answer. There must be a reason the law doesn't compel reopening and returning to school. But we're having reopening being uh, the order of the day by way of the policy direction. Well, well um... I mean, Roland, this particular um, issue raised by lawyer Sanzuladi Anyenene has to do with the um, tertiary students. It, it's not for the senior high school students. And the case of the tertiary students, the reason why it wasn't necessarily compulsory for everybody to go to school is that um, prior to the new directive that schools can reopen, majority of the campuses had already started their final exams. In fact, in some instances, some of the schools were even done with their final examination. So there wouldn't have been a need for people to go back to school when they were done writing their exam. Now, uh, for those who had to go back to school, um, some were comfortable with the e-learning platform, or even if they were not comfortable, I mean, they had just found a way of adapting to it. Except that you also have genuine cases where people could not afford the data, people by virtue of the remoteness of their area, could not have I mean, easy access to the platform. And that is where the directive came that, OK, now schools should open so that those who, uh, for some, any of the challenges that they are experiencing, cannot afford to be on the e-learning platform to have their examinations or be in a classroom. They should move back to campus and finish their, 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 their exams. So as I speak to you, just a, a, a small percentage of students even made it to campus, except yeah. for uh, UCC, where they had not yeah, but, but, I, but Isaac, the reality is that the law, the law is the law. It, it doesn't say it's peculiar to university. It's the law. It's, it's across board. It's the law by its application. The, 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 the issue about senior high school students, WASI is WASI. You cannot write WASI online. It was final year students of the tertiary institutions who, who had the alternative of using the e-learning system. That is why institutions which were done with the exams, which um, had students, even even uh, on my campus at Gimpa, for instance, there are instances where uh, Gimpa did not allow their students to go back to campus. You could just finish your exams online. I know of UTC students were asked to go back, um, uh, come back to campus. If you go to Legon, for instance, not every student went back to campus. Those who had peculiar challenges and had to need to go back to campus, they have to go. Yeah. Well, 
student leader. This is your response is a student's <laughs> leader's <laughs> response. This this your response is a student leader's response. It's it's very tinged no. with political response and then student leadership response. No, I mean, uh, uh, Roland, what I'm saying is verifiable. What I'm saying is that this particular EI aspect that you spoke about was to final year students of the tertiary institution. <laughs> and if you go to the yeah, 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 if you go to the Wasi writing students, you cannot ask some of them to study in the house and ask some of them to come back to campus. It doesn't work like that. But for the tertiary institutions, they have alternatives. And I cited an example with UCC, where, as at that time, for our engagement to the school and our uh, representatives of the grounds, they didn't use the e-learning alternative. So all of them had to go back to campus. But if you go to Legon, if you go to Tech, there's a limited number of students going, to, going back to campus. So I can say on authority that for the senior high school students, the e-learning option was not part of it. That is why timelines were given. You, did, you do a, number, a, a period, about six weeks in the classroom, then commit the rest of the time to write in the final exam. So um, whatever I'm putting out here is verifiable. No, don't worry. We have verified some. I know, apart from uh, Lee Gonda had uh, 3,000 students. The rest had 1,005 or so uh, each. For, for <laughs> so, so, I so, mean, so, 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 so right. that's, um, now let's get this round up. We're opening the phone lines. If you're a guardian, you're a parent, and you want to contribute, please make sure that you contribute as well. And the phone lines will be on your screens very soon. Uh -huh. So they're on. But uh, Dr. Kofi Amega, what should we be doing? The students need to go to school. Um, you are saying that too much stay at home is affecting their mental and mental faculties and their health. What should we be doing? What, what's the option left for us? Sabine, what's the option left for us? Well, the, well, yeah, the connection has been affected by, by wizards. Okay, <laughs> Sabine, you're in. Okay, did you hear my question? Please unmute, Sabine. Uh, okay, now can you repeat your question, please? So my, my question is, what are the options left for us? I mean, the students are already in school, and there's agitation outside school because of the concerns. What are the options left for us? The options are uh, to uh, learn how to cope with the situation. We cannot change the environment. We cannot change the challenges, the practical challenges of overcrowding, lack of Veronica go buckets, for example. So we must uh, teach uh, young people and the staff as well how to cope, uh, relaxation, uh, the proper um, way to uh, interact with other people, finding support. Uh, so the examples of, of signs that, that, that need that uh, detects uh, mental health uh, difficulties is problem sleeping, a sharp, you know, sharp change in the behavior, unable to sleep, uh, their appetite is sharply increasing or decreasing, relationship conflicts that were not existent before, inability to focus and study and, and, and perform your daily activities. So these are signs that mental health is deteriorating. And this is a time to maybe contact a, a mental health counselor for support. Yeah, uh, you know your stuff. I see all these among my, my sons. Yeah, true. Um, what is left for us, Isaac? Isaac? Kofi? Doc, are you on, online? No. Uh, OK. All right, please make sure uh, the phone lines are open. We have 030 or 2. Hello. Yeah. Uh -huh. Isaac, w what are the options left for us? Well, um, at this stage, I believe that uh, we need to intensify our uh, monitoring and uh, evaluation. Of course, we also periodically, there's a need to also engage um, all the relevant stakeholders. But most importantly, is the psychological aspect. Um, not just for students who have been affected uh, by this uh, uh, pandemic, but also in their preparation for the final exams. Institutions which have reported cases, there's a need for us to make uh, psychologists available who will be interacting with the students so that at every point in time, uh, they have the needed support. Um, it's one thing losing a colleague, is one thing being affected, and, of, uh, and, and generally being affected with the exams at all. And many of the students will tell you that because of the 
nature of the situation. They are unable to study. They cannot study without having to well, be worried about um, somebody being stricken down by the disease. And so there's a need for us to intensify our engagement with the relevant stakeholders, even the teachers, because the teachers assume the responsibility of parents when they, they, they watch our campus. And so we need to put them in, in a better shape to deal with the challenges of students. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kofi Megan has changed position. Yeah, but that's good. Um, what are the options left for us, Dr. Kofi Amega? I'm mute. I was just talking about internet connectivity, and they just cut the power here. So now I'm connecting with my mobile hotspot. So forgive me, that's the reason why I was temporarily out of the studio. That's, so that's what okay. are the options? So, um, you know, I talk about the balancing act. So um, the options left for us is that we need to find a way to improve nutrition of school children whilst they are in school. You know, um, this might seem very difficult, but shouldn't we look at having um, some dietitians employed on a part-time basis in the education offices so that they can manage, um, they can plan the diet of the students, you know, so that we can have students having very improved nutrition in the schools. Besides that too, we also need to look at having the infrastructure in place and whilst having the infrastructure in place, we need to find a way to improve the practices of these students. You know, we need to improve um, overcrowding in the schools as well. But you see, what is instructive to highlight is that, you know, recently, now WHO has admitted that there is aerosol transmission of the virus. You know, that means the virus now travels in air. There are tiny particles suspended in air, and then they can travel more than six feet away and can be very infectious. So that means overcrowding should be improved. We need to make sure that all the dormitories are well ventilated so that we can stem the, the, the viral transmission in, um, in the schools. Yeah. Please make sure you join us. Not, no more the phone lines. We want to see you pictorially. Yeah, that, that's how we want to get your messages across. So please, meeting ID is on, is on the screen. And then also we have the password. So the meeting ID 9781046279. And then we have the password as well, 4295. Please, uh, when you join, f get a good setting. You sh we shouldn't have light and all that. OK, no, not light behind you. So have a nice background, OK? Just like the way we see Sabine and Dr. Akofi. And May then, I add something, Rala? Yeah, oh no, that's okay, and then Isaac. But um, there's the other part that I want us to deal with quickly, uh, and it's about the registration. The Electoral Commission yesterday announced that they are going to set up the registration points in the schools, second cycle schools, because some of the students have attained 18, so they have to register. Uh, Dr. Kofi Amega, how is that a problem to cabin spread or not cabin? I know you're smiling. You don't want to touch this. Yeah. Apolitical. I wish I don't comment on this. You no, know? don't worry. I wish I don't comment. Th this, this is a health. This is this is a health yeah, conversation. Yeah, I, I, don't I know, worry. You put me on the spot. You know, you put me on the spot, Roland. Why do you do this? You know, for me, for me, um, this exercise. I don't know. Um, Basically, I have to admit, we have just sacrificed politics for public health. I have to be very honest. I mean, I must say this clearly, because the evidence suggests that we are having rising cases, you know, of COVID-19 in the communities, you know. And one of the protocols that we need to cut back on the infection is social distance, hand washing. Are we able to social distance whilst we go to register I'm not sure about that. You know, we have the facilities where they wash their hands. I'm not sure about that. More importantly, we are touching surfaces. We are touching surfaces. Even before WHO talked about aerosol transmission, we were talking about droplet transmission, where you cough, you, um, or you sneeze, there's saliva, there's mucus, and then they can get onto the, the surfaces. We are touching our faces and all those stuff. How? Do we sanitize all those biometric equipments before another person can? I'm not sure. So for me, what we're going to see is that very soon we'll hit 50,000 cases, as the learned um, professor said, Fred Binker said. And that is as a result of 
this um, registration exercise that is ongoing, you know, I have to admit, I'm talking from the standpoint of a public health person, not as a politician. I have to make that um, disclaimer. Mm, yeah, true. Yeah, it's good. When well, you don't want to be tacked politically. So, so you're out. You're, you're, you're not political. So, Dr. Kofi Amega, um, I'm recusing you from any perceived sure, blame. So don't worry. <laughs> um, Dr. Uh, oh, Sabin, how, how do we go about this? Look, we have registration going to go on. So, Charlie... The reality has to be established. Yes, um, I think there's a way to educate uh, and, and find ways to process with uh, registration, with social distancing. There are many, you know, I think uh, the administrators have to be creative, maybe set up appointments and so that not everybody comes at the same time, but everybody must uh, be disciplined for this kind of uh, process to be useful and, and effective. Yeah, I know how it goes, right? All right. Thank you for your assistance as well. And uh, Isaac, I saw you smiling. So it means you are in for it. Registration on campus, no problem. <laughs> You're smiling. No, I just caught uh, you there. Um, yeah. uh, Leonard, uh, don't, don't put me on the spotlight like that. Uh, let me first of all say that before I answer your question, uh, NUG is an apolitical uh, organization. And so um, I don't want my words here to be taken out of context. Secondly, your question is not about whether or not I support the registration or not. Not at but all. The question was straight up as to um, whether, I mean, the position of NOOCs regarding going to the campuses to register. I think, first of all, we must understand that uh, when schools reopen, uh, we said that those in boarding houses, uh, those, those coming from home and uh, are in schools which are boarding houses, should move to campus. There was a reason for that. We, do, uh, we didn't want people to go and mingle outside and come and more or less put a threat to those who have been confined to the campus. And so having used that as a base, I'll say that if the EC um, are taking a decision which more or less prevents the students from going to join those outside to register, then I think that is a good thing. It is a civic responsibility on the part of students, those who have met the criteria for registration, and it's a good thing for each and every Ghanaian to be part of the decision-making process especially with the youth whose the destiny or future is tied to the decisions we make today. So for, I mean, for us, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. All right. Now let me get on to the Zoom. I have a lot of, uh, look, this is, this is open commentary time on this subject. And I have uh, a number of you joining me. So I'm seeing your names. I'm closer to the screen now, so it's easier. Today, yeah, I can see some people behind their curtains. Please, let's, the background be nice. We don't want light behind your back, behind you. No light. If you have light behind you, I won't call you. Okay, I have seen some nurses joining. Okay, oh, that's good. Health workers. I think I'll call them first. Okay, they are now connecting. Um, okay, but let, Al Haji Ishak, that's your name on Zoom. Al Haji Ishak. Please, uh, let me hear from you, Alaji. Uh, hello, good morning, Roland. Yeah, please ask our panelists any question. We have Sabine Harris and then Kofia Megan, who is Dr. Kofia Megan. Isaac Jehai is president of the National Union of Ghana Students. And uh, Sabine okay. uh, uh, works with uh, Health Africa and then also is um, a mental health uh, expert. Please. Reduce okay. the volume Re on your set. Uh, All of you, reduce the volume yeah. on your set. Al Haji, do that. Please, can you hear me? Is it clear now? I can always hear you. Please reduce the volume on your set. Turn it off. Very well. I'm nowhere near my TV. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm linking with the team. All of you, reduce the volume on your set, please. All of you, stop. Can I proceed now? Yes, I'll allow you proceed. I'll allow you proceed. Well, I send a special greetings to Dr. Kofi Amega, head of nutrition at the University of Cape Coast. Thank you. Yeah. So now, uh, to my uh, concern, uh, it will be a, a, a mixture of a, a question and a contribution. Thank you. Please unmute Alaji. I call the next person. Okay, okay, all right. Roland. Hey, how many allergies are here? Ghazali, please wait. Ghazali, please wait. 
Okay, let me go to Baka devotion, Baka, the health workers, those wearing the the face marks, the health workers. Please unmute and and let me hear from you, health workers. Baka devotion, Baka, yeah. The risk profile. Oh, sorry. We have to take Alaji out. Uh, so we'll take him out. Devotion Baka, can you hear me? Please add your sound. Add, dial the sound or call the audio. You, you, there's a feature on... on. We can... Okay. Jerry Ankra. Jerry Ankra. Please unmute. And... Yeah, um, I'm here with you, please. Okay, okay please go ahead. Ask our All experts right, so anything or contribute. Yes. Very well. Um, I'd like to thank you guys very much for giving us the opportunity to come through. So um, mine would be in a form of a question, posing it to all of us. So as the question has been trending, I'd like to find out if our leaders really take into perspective the public health with regards to saving lives over livelihoods. I want to know what the plan is now, because trying to put both of these things together, I think we are failing. We are putting everything on board, and the numbers are increasing. And I don't know whether we are taking things out of perspective or within perspective. Because what I want us to find out, are we prioritizing lives over livelihoods or livelihoods over lives? So that's the question I'd like to pose to um, <laughs> this question. To help us All answer. my panelists are apolitical. Isaac says he's apolitical. Dr. Kofi Megan is apolitical on this platform. It's Sabine to is. OK, so. Uh, Patrick, Patrick, unmute and, and go ahead. Uh, Roland, good morning. Good morning, Patrick. Yes, uh, my uh, is basically a question mm -hmm. uh, to the education minister. Oh, he thinks he's not he's on the unsafe. panel. He's not on the panel. Education minister is on the panel. Please change your question. Yeah, basically, I think that our kids are not safe in the schools. You see all the protocols that they have discussed. They have talked about it nicely. But if you go down there, that is not the case. I have a boy in one of the schools. And what they are telling us on radio, the ministers and all the people, is not correct. Nothing is happening at the schools. So for me, I think that the kids being in the school is not in our interest as the parents. But at times, you have no option. They are saying you should send them. So please, let the government understand. What they are telling us is existing in the schools. It's not going on. Okay. And the vote in the registration in the schools, who don't like it, is good. But can they follow the protocols? I don't yeah. think they can follow the protocols. Even the ministries are not following the protocols. How much less the schools? <laughs> so I think that voting, that registration in the schools, they should think about it. Thank you very much. I just don't know whether my panelists will want to touch the political issues. But Alaji Ishak, is your internet still bad? I I'm mute and, and talk to me. Let me see. No. Um, the health. Okay. Sir Trinity, unmute and talk. Uh, good morning, Roland. Yeah, morning. please go ahead. Yes, I, I have some few concerns regarding the registration of the students on campuses. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to I'm hoping it's a question. Easier. I'm hoping it's a question, not a concern. A question. Please pose a question. Yes. So the question I want to I want to ask is why are parents not being allowed to visit their, their children on campuses whilst the, the EC is asking party agents to take part in the registration of these same students? I, I don't get seem to understand that one. Because if parents can't visit their kids because of the fear of infecting the kids, then why should party agents and EC officials who have not been tested be allowed to, to visit these same students? It kind of beats beats my imagination. Okay. Why why is that why is that being allowed to happen? Well, point made, point made. Uh, Doctor Kofi Mega, let me start with you. Then I'll go to Sabine, and then uh, I'll go to Jay Hyde. Yeah. Doctor Kofi Mega, can you respond to the last the, the first two? Uh, the first two was on which one? Can okay. You so, remind me, please. So the first said they um they they are concerned. Uh, I think it's more like the mental the, the cases are rising. So. Jerry is concerned. And then the second one is about 
the registration is ongoing in the schools, but parents are not supposed to visit. So why do we have registration ongoing by electoral commission officials are supposed to go to the schools and do register? So you, you, you know what? Um, I, I think I totally agree with that policy that parents should not be going to the schools. You know, all this is an effort in trying to prevent overcrowding in schools or preventing spread in schools. Because whoever is coming from home, we don't know their status, their COVID-19 status. So they go there, close contact, and you don't know what they have transmitted to their ward or kid. And then they can also subsequently pass it on to allow parents into school. There should be a window where that is done and um, so that we cut back on this thing. But I think what is also very important, and it ties up nicely with um, the question, is that we should find a way of ramping up testing in the schools. You know, if we're going to keep the children in schools, then, I mean, from time to time, we need to test them for COVID-19. Because, you know, whether we like it or not, um, the moment you do a test, you identify a case, you cut back on the transmission um, um, chain. You okay. know, so that is something that we should also be doing. So sorry to disappoint your, your listener that... Um, I don't agree that parents should go. In terms of history of patients who have not been tested and they are in schools, that one, as you have already indicated, we are apolitical, and <laughs> I don't want to comment on that. Thank so, um, please, the health workers, go out and rejoin. Devotion, Baka, please go out and rejoin. We want to hear from you, the health workers. I, I think we're interested. Go out and rejoin. We're having difficulty with your audio. We have your video, but we can't get your audio. Sabine. Yes, uh, I do understand uh, concern of parents who would like to, to go on campus. So if we, all parents are anxious, worried. They are wondering they are wondering if they're making the choice of sending their children to school. What I can say is if there's an increased amount of anxiety and worry and distress, um, us at EAP Africa, we are one point far away. Uh, we provide counseling services 24 7. And I'm going to give you, uh, if you will, the EAP Africa. Zero two zero one eight 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 four four zero. Let me repeat it. Zero two zero one eight 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 four four zero. Mm, all right. So this is it, AP Africa for uh, we provide twenty four seven twenty four hour seven uh, counseling services. Uh, me and the team for for parents. Staff who are feel the pressures of the work study of the family lives. Mm. Isaac, your response to the question so far. Unmute, Isaac. Uh, sorry, um, I, 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 I stand with Dr. Kofi Amaida on this particular matter. The fact that I mean, um, Allowing parents to come and visit the ward is, 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 is like one that's posing a threat to all of them. If you, you cannot tell sometimes, especially the asymptomatic ones who has the virus, and if you end up creating a super spreader on campus, one person can end up in a them. So I think that is in the interest of everybody that uh, parents are not allowed to come and uh, visit their ward. Uh, Marvin says that I think that the gentleman did not just limit to parents. His concern was that why are we allowing the EC? Tested personnel to go into the company with our parents that are not being allowed. I think that it, it is also imperative that we ensure that people who are going into the company to, you know, uh, register the students are having fled to the fear of the virus. Okay, okay. Uh, George Kwaku, George Kwaku, please talk. Okay. George didn't join with his son. George, can you hear me? No, 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 you cannot. Okay, Alaji Shark. Okay, Roland, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Roland, can you hear me? 
Uh, yes, well, I can. Okay, let me add in a little bit. Maybe I'll talk as It's your internet. Your internet is very bad. Yeah, practice medicine as well. And it has this level that I've already talked about, that they're already in school. The risk is high. How do we manage the risk? Right. It, it is true that among the various cohorts, the section that are in school will pose the minimal uh, as compared to yeah, Dr. Well, well, beautifully. Well, we have we have a very bad audio. Right. Well, thank you all of you, Dr. Kofi Megan, Sabine Heresy with AFP Africa, and um, and then also uh, Jay Hyde, Isaac Jay Hyde is the president for the Ghana uh, the National Union of Ghana Students. I have to be more appropriate. But I, look, thank you all of you for your time, and it's always worth it um, educating Ghanaians and deepening our conversation. Sabine, Kofi, and then Isaac. All of you have a great day. And the rest of you joining, sorry we couldn't take all of you, but we appreciate you, okay? Well, we did tell you that the Electoral Commission, based on that announcement and follow that with a press statement, are now pitching camp in various senior high schools across Ghana because they want to register students who are 18 years and above. And so Max Olagbagba has been deployed to one of the schools currently, I believe it's in uh, Presec Legon. And um, Maxwell, what can you tell us? Okay. Okay, so we're currently um, here at the um, Presec Legon um, school campus. Um, we understand um, that the registration for senior high schools is starting today for senior high schools without registration centers. And here at Presec Legon, it is one of the centers um, that the registration is going to take place. So you can see behind me, the setup um, is ready for the registration to start. All the chairs here are arranged um, in accordance with the social distancing protocol. The registration officials are yet to arrive here on the ground but there's an NDC party agent. The NDC party agents are actually waiting um, here. We'll be speaking with them shortly, but let's interact with the s senior house master. Uh, so you can join me here. Okay, so um, your name and then your designation, sir. Okay, uh, my name is Kofi Yesu, the senior house master of Presec Legon. In fact, this exercise, as we are going to embark upon it here, is under the strict supervision of our headmaster. Okay. That is Mr. David Ojija. And so far, he has detailed about five teachers to be in charge of this so that there wouldn't be any chaos or any kind of problems in Presec. You know, Presec is a unique school. And for that reason, when it comes to anything which uh, goes with the nation, we have to be part and then we go according to how the standards are going to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So can you tell us how you intend um, rolling out today's exercise um, here? How are the students going to come here to register? What, what is it going to be like? Okay. Yeah, first of all, when the letter was brought to the headmaster, the headmaster quickly assembled a team um, and then tried to find a way of going through this. One, we all know the modalities about this uh, registration. One, the person should have his... Ghana card or the passport. If you don't have it, somebody who will register can vouch for you. And the one who will vouch for you should be somebody that the person knows. Okay. Not that you are vouching for any other person. And as an institution like Presec, Legon, yeah, we have a lot of students here that we believe they have attained 18 years and beyond. So already an announcement has been made to all students concerning those who have attained the age of 18 and beyond. Mm -hmm. And the re uh, regulation is that classes will still go on. It will not disrupt our classes. But the teachers who have been detailed to be part of this exercise, they will be going from class to class. And those who have attained the required age or eligible to vote, they will come. And as you can see, we have arranged seats here 
for them. So the numbers that we have here are close to 100. So when they come, you sit, and when it's your turn, you move in, do your registration, and go back to class. There are those who have raised concerns that this is likely to disrupt you know, um, classes. As a senior house pastor here, uh, what do you have to say to that? Yeah, I told you that Presac is a unique school. Okay. Um, though it's a national exercise, but we will not allow it to disrupt classes. So the arrangement as I've given you, that is how we are going um, to go by. That is, you'll be in class. Classes will go on. When is your turn to vote, um, register? Then the teachers will bring you here. Quickly you do it and go back and continue academic work. Mm -hmm. yes. let, let, let me just find out from you um, your, your own opinion, your personal opinion um, about this registration exercise. There are some who are saying that they think that, uh, I mean, the, the whole thing about students coming back to school to prepare for exams was a ploy just to get them to be part of this registration exercise. From where you stand as somebody who is a teacher and a senior house pastor, what do you make of these things making around on social media especially? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm a public servant. Okay. My duty here is to teach and guide the students to become some people in the future. Okay. If you have been assigned to ensure that students come and then take part in registration, why am I going to have different opinion either going A or B? My duty is to ensure that the registration goes on and goes on smoothly as expected. So I don't have any opinion about this. Okay. And, and you do not think that the registration, um, the students coming back to school was applied to get them to register? Um, for that one, uh, you can leave it. You, you can judge it okay. yourself. But for me, my duty is to be in school and then teach. Okay. So once I'm in school, if I've been assigned with other um, teachers, to embark on certain um, activities. Mm. I cannot say that I will not do it, okay. no. So I have to ensure that everything goes on and then it goes on smoothly. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you very much for speaking to us. You're welcome. Okay, so you just had the senior house uh, master of Presec Ligon. We have an NDC agent um, here uh, with us. We want to speak to her and find out um, from her uh, what their expect what her expectation is she's here with another um, colleague uh your name yeah i'm rakia R rakia what rakia. what's your full name rakia osman okay rakia osman you've been here with your colleague for how many minutes now oh for more than i think um if i'm right three hours okay yeah for oh. the past two hours sorry for okay. the past two hours okay and what time was the registration supposed to start it's supposed to start at 7 a.m. 7 a.m.? Yeah. Yes, okay. please. And it has not started. Um, <laughs> have, you, have you heard anything from the registration officials or what exactly is that? Okay, we haven't heard anything. You know, we know we're supposed to start today. So we were here as early as... Okay. We were here as early as possible. And then we got here thinking by 7 a.m. the EC officials would have been here. But as it stands now, none of them are here. And it, 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 it not, it's not good, you know, they're supposed to be here as at now. Because we as party agents are here. Okay. Yeah. So what would you be looking out for as a party agent for the NDC? What, what exactly would you be looking out for whilst you are here? Uh, okay, so always is to ensure that, um, you know, at the end of the registration uh, uh, period or day, we, take, we do a tally. So we have to make sure that the total number of people, students who will be able to register today will tally with what we are doing. Uh -huh. So we have something we call that's the, um, the daily, um, daily sheets. That's the total number here. So, and then we, we have to also ensure that everything goes on well. You know, every student that comes has the requirement to go through the process successfully. So that's it. Okay. And you'll be looking out for also for those who will be guaranteeing for them? What, what is that? Yes, so um, the requirement is either a Ghana card or a passport. And looking at these students, I think most of them wouldn't be having the Ghana card or the passport. So they will need guarantees. And then the guarantees are those who have already done their card and they can vouch for these students. And there should be people that they, they know. Let's say the teachers could be people who could guarantee for the students. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Okay. But, but, but what do you think? This is your personal opinion, not as a party agent, as a Ghanaian. What do you make of the registration happening you know, in schools? There are people who are saying out there that the students coming back to school to write their exams was just a ploy to get them to register to take part in elections. What, what, what do you make of these um, assertions on social media? Okay, to me, um, I don't see anything wrong with registering students on campus, okay. uh, in school, let me say in SHS, mm -hmm. because I think even when we were in school, they do register us before we go home. Yeah. But looking at the situation in which we found ourselves, that's the pandemic, mm -hmm. surely I think by before November, almost all the final year students would have finished their exams and they'll be at home. Mm -hmm. So to my personal opinion, I would have uh, suggested that we should maybe leave them till they get home. But I think by then too, the EC would have finished with the registration process. So since the decision has already come out that we should register them, we should just ob observe the, what, the precautionary measures and then make sure they are safe. You know, the social distancing and everything is well in, uh, inputs, you know, and I think we are good to go. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. Let, let's do it. So I think we are good to go. Thank you very much, um, Osman Rakia. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Okay, great. So you just heard from um, Osman Rakia. She's a party agent for the NDC. As she stated, they've been waiting here for the past two hours, waiting for the registration um, officers to come um, so they can start their. Um, registration for the voters ID card. The registration officers are yet to show up here. As you heard, the senior house master say um, that the students who are 18 years who uh, have the required documentation, the passport and the Ghana card, and for those who do not have, their friends would have to guarantee for them. He says they are ready and he does not think that this would distract, you know, classes here at Presec Legon. So that is the situation I'm here. We'll be monitoring from many other senior high schools here you know, um, in the greater Accra region, and we'll be reporting on our, in our subsequent bulletins. Over to you in the studio. Well, so Max Alakbakba there on the campus of the Presbyterian Boys School right here, uh, a leg on and giving us the latest when it comes to the Electoral Commission pitching camp on campuses of various senior high schools across Ghana to start the registration of senior high school students, third years especially, who are back in school and at 18 years and above. Well, you can get these details more on our bulletins right here on the channel and other programming. But in the meantime, we will also take you, uh, because this has been trending, Sarkodia uh, has a... Uh, a new song is called T, a CEO featured E40, had been trending uh, for the better part of uh, the night. And also, uh, it's, it's interesting the way the song goes. We'll, we'll use that as an interlude, but also we told you we'll bring you the ballot box. Uh, because today, we're bringing to you a live episode of our first edition. Uh, before now, we've been having a number of interactions, bringing you a lot of previews. Uh, MFA Atiamu Eli, as well as Winston Amwa, the lead host, had been doing a number of works, interacting with various interest groups, seeking their opinion in Hohwe, in the Volta region, asking them what would influence their decision to vote and for who, which party, etc. What would they want to be the accountability benchmarks for them as voters but we want to make ready for you sarkodies ceo and um, we'll take a break and bring you all that yeah and, and shatawali has um, dream too ugly and uh Juice or out yeah. out up in the top three years, yeah. 2020, yeah. yeah I but but Sakodia today. Today is Sakodia's birthday. First of all, let's wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, <laughs> King Zach. Uh, we just pray that you know you, all your dreams and aspirations come true. I don't know what you're dreaming about, but then you know you're already there. Yeah, the you know, rap 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 what? Okay, yeah, the rap king. Yeah. So happy birthday to you, Sakodia. Yesterday he released a new video 
of uh, CEO Flo, and it has been trending on Twitter at number one since yesterday, and it's still trending, and that was the video that we played for you. What do you think about the song? I thought it was a, it's a diss song. Yeah, you were, you know. It's you were, a diss song, yeah, so I understand. Yeah, it's no, it's you know, I think what he wants to do now, he'll do a diss song. So <laughs> yeah, so it has been trending, number one, since yesterday, and Rem Romeo Swag said, just listen to hashtag CEO Flo, and all I can say is can Sakodie no get size. Truly the rap god. And yeah, it's he's a rap god. I mean, what, what else do you expect? And uh, okay, that was from Great Man. And we also have uh, I'm on my hustle like a stripper on the pole. Hashtag see your flow. And that's Sakodie. Sakodie's thing. So yeah. Uh, happy birthday to you, Ken Sak. And yeah, let's move on to some other stories. Now, some industry players on Thursday visited former musical president of war and uh, commiserated with him following the demise of his dad. Now, during this meeting, my colleague Doreen Avio caught up with the war and he cleared the air about the viral photo of him holding a bottle of shit. He also talked about politics. Here's more. People will go every height to paint somebody black because of political gain. From, from accusing somebody to be covered positive when they don't even know the person's status, to when somebody genuinely dies, linking the death to somebody who spoke with the person and said this person killed the person. And so now when somebody criticizes me, I look, I look into the criticism three or four times before I really see whether I should respond to it or I should pay it attention. Quite recently, I visited Ochama Kwame. His niece uh, is having some shito. She said, mm -hmm. she was, so let me buy some. So I said, well, can you pose with the shito so that I can take a picture and you put it on my social media to promote my shito business? The next day, I saw it in the media everywhere. Obo, after losing, is into shito business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and how, how? And I felt, oh, somebody. This is. Don't think somebody is joking. It's not somebody joking. It's somebody who politically sees a war as a threat, and so anything to paint a war negative. Let me fun it. They will actually go the step, to the extent of paying some blogger to write a story and do it. And so now, when people criticize. I look at the criticism where it's coming from. If it's good, I just pick the good from it. But if I don't see any good and I see it just as mischievous, I just let it pass. And so the same way I look at criticism from my industry. I mean, there are people that I've never met, but I see them criticizing me. They've, I've never had an engagement with, they don't even know my character, but they will talk about my character negatively. Sometimes when I look behind, you find out they've been motivated by other people to do so. Mm. And so I look at it with, with double eyes. Mm. Do you think their, their negativity kind of contributed to you losing the primaries? Or? I mean, you, you, can't, you can't know. I mean, we do what man can do, but of course, God disposes. And so God proposes, uh, what was the saying? Man proposes, God disposes. You know? So, uh, I've been asked whether I think the coronavirus tag, whether the comments from my people, uh, whether the Delhi girl, whether it was, your, it was financial, because of course I was going against an incumbent who was financially more prepared than I was. You know, there have been so many questions, but I don't look into that. I, I look at the fact that this is my first time. I had 42% of the total voter population. It was five people in the context five people in a context and I get 42%, wow, that is great. And so I am motivated by that. I just have to find another 9% or 10% and I'm the winner. So how do I find that 10% more to add to my 42%? That's the focus. That's where I'm looking at. Yeah, so that was a war and he's saying that he doesn't, sh he doesn't sell shit off. Please, he doesn't do that. He was just advertising for Ochami Kwame's niece. And let's move on now. Ochami Kwame, Berma Cindy, Kitty, uh, Sydney Kitty, and some other musicians who went visiting spoke about Obor's loss and how they still support him. It's really sad that uh, when his dad died, we didn't get the opportunity as musicians to come and do the whole pump and, and, and plunder to let people know 
that we support Kabina. But I don't think any musician in Ghana has ever tried to become an MP before. And I think that we should say it on record that Obuo is blazing the trail. He's doing so many things that we've never seen before. Say corporate social responsibility, musical presidency at his age, and trying to become, and I think that he's going to be the first musician to become an MP in, in this country. Say Ayiko to you uh, by Soseko for, I mean, it's not easy to venture into this political thing and all that. I mean, as young as you are, you're bold enough to say, say, yo, I'm going for it. I mean, for, for me, for first time, you know, competing with an, uh, contesting with what? An, an incumbent who's been there for so many years. Now, Uchimi come out with, you know, that vote you, you, you're able to pull out. I mean, from now we say, are you cool to you? I would think, sir, a great motivation to most of the youth. I mean, I know my brother Tech is also aspiring to, I mean, next year, 2024. Oh, bro. <laughs> I mean, so more like you've opened the door for, you know, some of us in the creative art, you know, to also venture into politics. So we say, Ayiko, why are you there? You know, we are proud of you. I just want to say we are very grateful for everything you've done. I remember what I have personally, I always tell people that I want to pick from a war is his calmness. Because I remember very vividly the nights of the Ghana Music Awards when the Buhaha happened. I was seated about four rows behind, he was seated in the front and everything was happening, the whole place was, everybody was, and I, could, I was looking at what was just there like that. <laughs> I was like, how is this man so calm under any situation? Like, no matter what it is, he's just there like, I think it, it happens to people who are solution oriented. When there's a problem, he's not thinking of the problem, thinking of a solution. So I think that's one thing I picked from him. And I want to say, God bless you so much for everything you've done for musicians in Ghana. May he continue to bless you with good life good health, happiness, and fulfillment. You know, of his own. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a league of my own. So I can only appreciate what he has done and believe that I can also do more. Mm -hmm. But to, to disrespect him will be a, 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 a blunder. Mm -hmm. it, it, or a, I don't know, it will be such a very bad thing in my life. So we just heard from Achame Kwame, Berima, Sydney, and Kidi, and also Tick. And they're talking about how they still support Obo despite him losing uh, recently at the primaries. And we also heard from Obo saying that he doesn't sell shit off. So that's all we have for Showbiz for this morning. My name is Kadi. Becky brings you more Showbiz at midday. Charlie, that was good. <laughs> I loved it. Bye, so psycho for he's going to be uh, Bobby Wine right here in Ghana and family tree entertainment. I remember you back in the day. But look, before we wrap up, let me just run this by you. Golden Finger Industries Limited is a fast growing manufacturing company selling fruit into quality organic cosmetic product, cleaning and disinfectant, produced right here in Ghana under certified FDA conditions. And they have in stock GF hand sanitizers, GF rubbing alcohol, GF gentle antiseptic, GF multipurpose liquid soaps, GF hand washing soap, GF antiseptic cleaner, GF multi-purpose glass cleaner, and they are located at the Giselle Estate SCC DVLA on that wager road. You can contact them on the following lines. We have 0546274070 and 0546273990. They have a reliable landline there, and the number is 0302-957950. We say thank you for joining us. Make sure throughout the rest of the day. You are interacting with us right here on social media. We're, we're saying bye-bye for now. <laughs>